Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This is take two of the same video because I realized I was recording the wrong mic. So take two of another video on how to add hair on Unity on an avatar. This is both the booth and western method. So without further ado, I want to get into a little bit of talk about the channel. For those of you who aren't interested, feel free to fast forward a little bit. Should be over in a couple of seconds. Uh, you, have, Some of you may have noticed that the way I've been and doing linking is now different in the description of my videos. Instead of linking direct sources to the avatar I have in my videos now, I will be linking Discord servers. I'm sorry if this is a little bit of an inconvenience to some of you out there. Recently one of my videos had been flagged and nearly taken down, which almost resulted into a strike on my channel because of somebody reporting said video. The YouTube bot unfortunately found the NSFW links within the description, which is completely fair of them to be taking that down. I didn't think they would actually check external links when it comes to avatars, nor did I think it would be a huge issue. Uh, but apparently it is, and now that I know that somebody is actively flagging my channel for this type of content, I am going to try to be 10 times more careful about it. So thank you for those of you who are understanding, and I apologize to those it is an inconvenience to to have to access creators discord servers I promise you if you want the avatar it is well worth going to support those creators and seeing their other work I will no longer be linking the direct shop in my description I will still be crediting everyone so please do not even worry about no crediting that will 100% still happen but I just have to be a little bit safer about how I do this. Now there's a little bit of tidbit before you start the video if you've gotten this far. I'm going to be now going over the booth way of doing this and the western version of doing this. So for those of you who buy models off of Gunroad and Payhip and are wanting to do this, once I switch over to this avatar right here you can know to play the video again or skip forward until you see this avatar is when I'll be going over more pay hip and gumroad models. For those of you who are wanting the booth method of doing this, it'll be at the beginning of the video, so you will just stick around and everything's going to be a-okay. When you are wanting to add hair onto an avatar, there is a couple ways of going about this. For the most part, creators choose to do Blender, but Unity is also another easy way to add hair onto avatars. Now, what you want to do is you want to find yourself a hair specifically on Booth that you want to buy. I recommend, if you want the most seamless looking hair possible, to buy hair that is made for your model. So if we look down here, if you have Kikyo or Lifa or Maya or Celestia, you buy hair that is specifically made for them. I also do not find it a big, huge deal to buy hair not made for the avatar and just put it on this avatar anyways. As you see, I have Zomi here and none of these hairs are made for her. But because of the way Unity allows you to scale objects, it is very possible to make a hair fit the avatar. It won't be a 100% seamless though. A lot of the times there will be tiny little gaps that you may notice. If that is such a bother, I do recommend finding hairs made for the specific avatar. Now, now that we have the hairs and we've downloaded them, we've unzipped the zip file and we have specifically found the Unity asset. It's just going to have the little Unity icon, the same thing that you see up here in the corner. You are going to drag and drop that into your assets in the lower left hand side. Once you have that down there and your hair is imported into your project and you see it down here in your assets, you are going to come up to your avatar you want the hair swap. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on the hair and make sure it is a separate mesh from your body. If your hair is highlighted with your body, unfortunately this method is not for you and this video will not help you. Assuming that your hair is its own separate highlight apart from everything else, we can proceed with the video. So the first thing you might notice is your avatar actually has in the left hand side this blue coloring to it that this one down here does not have. If you're having the blue coloring with that, what we're going to do 
is we are going to unpack the prefab. Now we want to do this because if I try deleting the hair as is while it's blue, it's gonna tell us cannot restructure prefab instance, which is an issue. So from here, we are going to click our main part of the avatar. We're gonna right click and we are gonna come down to unpack prefab. That's going to change the color and that means that we can pretty much do whatever we want to this avatar now when it comes to moving stuff around, deleting separate meshes and stuff like that. We are going to now delete the hair asset. We are going to click on our hair. We are going to right click it and then we are going to click delete so that hair asset is going to disappear. For the sake of this video as well, I'm going to be hiding all the accessories. Now that we have that, we are going to come down into our assets folder and we are either going to find our hair through the folder that it will be located in or all prefabs. Now from here we are going to find either the hair that lines up with our specific avatar name or just the one that works best for the avatar that you are going to be using. I will use Kikyo. From here we are going to left click and hold down, drag it all the way up to right on top of our main avatar. That's going to move it into the general location that your avatar is. From here we have a bunch of hotkeys that we can use. Now these hotkeys are respectively R, which is allows us to scale everything with height and length. This is going to allow us to change the uh, general scale of it. Then we have E. This allows for rotation on either the Y, the X, or the Z axis. And then we have W, which is just the general moving around of the asset itself. So now that we have that, we are going to roughly line up where we want our hair, making sure to move all around the avatar to make sure it's how we want it. And we can scale it a little bit to however we want to be like, wow, that looks great. Get it to where you like it on your avatar. Now that we have that done, we are going to look at our hierarchy system again, that we've scaled everything how we want it and it looks good. We're going to look at our hierarchy system again. Now there's two things that we want to do here. We want to drop down all the way from hips to spine to chest to neck to head. From here we are going to see all of our hair bones. What you want to do is you want to control left click every single one of the previous hair bones from the hairs that you deleted from the avatar. We are going to remove these bones because they are no longer in use. After you've con control clicked them, you can look over to the right hand side where it says VRC fizz bone or dynamic bone. You are going to click the three dots and then you are going to click remove component. Now from here, there is an, another option where we can look into our hierarchy system and we can can right click everything we control clicked and click delete. The reason that I do not do this specifically is because sometimes these bones can be attached to other assets and it can be pretty vital when deleting them. So do this at your own discretion. It will definitely free up some more space for you and more optimization if you do delete them. But for the sake of nothing breaking, that is something you will have to do at your own discretion. After we've done that, we are going to find our ponytail that we added or a hair that we added. And we are going to hold down click and we are going to drag that directly on top of our head armature. Therefore, that is now attached to our head armature. From here, we are going to click play mode and we are going to come from game up here at the top to scene. We are going to come back to most likely W for you to pardon me, click on your avatar at the top of the hierarchy system, not just the hair, the entire avatar. And then we will move our avatar around so we can see that this hair here is now attached to our avatar. We can click E here and move it around and be like, wow, that looks so great. Now, if your hair is clipping into specific parts of your body, I definitely recommend checking out my VRC Fizzbone Colliders, just so you know how to add a collider to stop it from clipping into parts of your body. Now that we have it here, there's a few more things to go over when it comes to booth related hair, which is blend shapes. If you click on the hair, you may notice here at the uh, right hand side, there's a little tab called blend shapes. If you pull that down, you notice there's all of these little sliders. Now these sliders mimic or not mimic, change different parts of the avatar's shape, size, it can delete aspects, it can do whatever you want 
This is mostly to fit your avatar and your specific style that you are going for. So one booth model hair could actually be a variety of hairs and you simply just need to mess with the blend shapes to get it there. Another thing is that most of the time, if you find it in the assets folder, it will include materials, other materials that you can do to change the hair's color, to change whatever you want about it. You know, you could get some crazy looking hair going on here or however you want. Or you can have the texture files, which gives you all different color textures to change the hair however you want. From here, you can continue editing your avatar or upload it itself, and everything should work perfectly and okay. Now, moving on to the Western avatars. I want everyone to keep in mind that Western is a little bit different from Booth, and it requires a few more steps and is a little bit more complicated. So please, please, please... Pretty please pay extra close attention if this is the side of the tutorial that you are following through because it is very easy to make a mistake that'll break your entire project or it will make sure that this does not work. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to check for one specific thing. If this specific thing is not applicable to your avatar, this tutorial is not going to work for you and you have to do things through Blender and it is not possible to do it through Unity without it either being extremely laggy or some roundabout way which at this point is not worth teaching because it's not a really viable option. Now. We are going to click on the hair and we are going to make sure when I click on the hair, only the hair is highlighted. If your hair is highlighted along with your entire body, it means that your hair mesh was merged with your body mesh and this option is not going to work for you. Meaning you cannot delete it in Unity, it is very hard to edit and there's like a roundabout way of getting it to work but it is laggy. I want to teach you guys how to do things the correct way if I'm teaching you it how to do it the easy way. So from here, we're going to make sure that our hair is a separate mesh. If this checks out and your hair is a second, a separate mesh, we can move on to the second part. Now you're going to notice that your prefab up here is blue, meaning that if you try to delete anything in your hierarchy system, it is going to say cannot restructure prefab instance. We do not want that. We are going to come up here and we are going to right click your entire avatar here and we are going to click unpack prefab meaning that all of this is going to turn gray there is no blue color here from here we are going to click the hair and we are going to click delete and we're going to click delete we're going to remove the hair from the meshes that it was previously attached to now from here we are going to do this a little bit different how i did the other avatar we are going to drop down our hierarchy system from spine to chest to neck to head from here we are going to look for our hair roots we are going to look for the hair bones that are being used for the hair that is no longer existing on the avatar we are going to drop down or we're just going to click on whatever hair there was so for me i'm going to control left click all of these hairs so i can collect them at once i'm going to look over to the right hand side where it says vrc fizz bones or dynamic bones click on the three dots and then we are going to click remove component that means that those fizz bones no longer exist within the project the same thing i said with the booth model here if you see these little things that we've selected here in the hierarchy system these bones we selected we are going to right click there is an option to delete if you want more space on your avatar, you can 100% delete those. Although, when it comes to model setup, every model is set up differently. So, deleting that could affect your project. Do that at your own discretion and your own risk if you would like to do that yourself. For the sake of this video, I will not be doing that just so everything works smoothly. We're going to pull up our armature for now and we are going to find the hair that we have bought. Assuming you have bought this hair from either Payhip or Gumroad, you are not going to be given an already complete Unity file. You are going to be given the FB. Now that you have your FBX, which is going to be a piece of paper with a little cube on it for the icon, you're going to drag that FBX into your assets and it should look like this. You are going to see that it has the hair, you're going to see that it has this little play icon beside it, and if you click it, it's going to be whatever the name is, import settings. From here, we are going to drag and drop our hair into our avatar at the very top right here. 
directly on top of our avatar so it is attached to the avatar. Now from here we have our hotkeys. So we have R, which is scaling of the hair, meaning we can mess with its length, width, and height however we see fit. Then we have E, which is general rotation on the axis of our avatar. And then we have W, which is just general moving. So from here, we are going to adjust our hair so it is fitting onto our avatar however we want. Do some adjusting here. I'm just going to do this for the sake of this video. Now that it's in the general location that you personally want it, that you're like, yeah, I'm satisfied, this is exactly how I want it, we are going to take this hair and we are going to drop down our armature system. We are going to drop it down all the way until we see head. We are going to drag and drop the hair directly on top of the hair armature, meaning that it is now attached to our head. So coming up to the very, very top here where it says play mode, we are going to click play and we are going to make sure, we're going to click our avatar here, and we're going to make sure that is attached to the head. Seeing as the hair is moving with the head and not its separate object means that we have done it correctly. Next, we're going to drop down our hair's armature. Now, for every single hair, this is going to look completely different, but you are going to look down and drop down the armature until you find the hair bones. Most creators conveniently name these for you. They will name the specific bone that they are, what side. Make sure when you are applying your bones, it is applied to the correct hair bone, meaning that when I'm attaching bone to the avatars, it's going to be attached to this group here because it says front hair middle. It says side hair left. We want that there. Do not attach it to the main part of the avatar's hair, like do not attach it here, do not attach it to armature, do not attach it to head, we do not want that. You attaching bones to any parts of these that isn't the hair itself is going to cause the entire hair to break, it's going to move around on its own, it's going to move around on a separate armature, and it is going to look very, very wonky. Do not do it. For the sake of showing you in this video, I will show you what you're not looking for. So if I attach it to the main part, if I add my bones to the main part, and I come up to my avatar and I start moving it, this is what we do not want. You can see that there's a separate... We do not want that. So if you are getting that, you are doing it completely wrong and you did not follow my steps. Alright? So now that we know our hair isn't moving like that, we're going to come down to the hair bones. We are going to control left click all of those hair bones so that we have all of them selected and we are going to come to the right hand side where it says add component. We are going to search up fizz bones or whatever you want to search until VRC fizz bones shows itself. You are going to click that. If you do not have VRC fizz bones showing in your project, that means you did not import the recent VRC SDK. Please go download that. Please go import that. Once you have all of that, we are going to come down to uh, radius here and we are going to up the radius just so it's just enough so that it pops out a tiny bit. This is this is the start of where the collision is going to happen. So when you touch your hair, it's going to happen when your hand gets about to the outside line of this capsule here. That's exactly what we want it to. We don't want it to be too big. We don't want it to be too small. We just want it just right. This will also help with colliders. If your hair is clipping into parts of your bodies, please check out my collider video, Fizzbone Collider video. It'll help with that problem. Now that we have all of this, all of this done, we've messed with the Fizzbone settings. We are now going to click play at the top hand of the screen. Come to scene here. We're going to click on our avatar at the top and we are going to move it around. And would you look at that? Our hair moves with our avatar. That's exactly what we want. Now, most hairs that come in FBX form do not have materials attached to them. So please go check out either my how to make materials for hair video, which I also have added, or you can drag and drop whatever hair material you have or have already set up. I'll just use whatever I have available. And that is all you have to do from here. You can upload your avatar and it is a-okay. You have done it. You have changed the hair. 
Thank you to those of you who have stuck through this video. I want you guys to keep in mind that everything that has been shown in this video will be linked in the description. Sometimes things will be linked in the form of a Discord server. Things like this hair I am showing now will not be linked due to the fact it's no longer for sale, but I will link the creator's Discord server. The hair in the previous video will be linked. The avatar in the previous video will be linked. So do not even worry, or the previous segment of this video. So do not worry. I really hope this video helped you and helped those who wanted to learn. This was my most requested video. So without, you know, without further ado when it comes to it, goodbye and have a nice day.